Hello, everybody. It's Phil from One Wolf Studio here again, this time even sooner than I'd expected. And here's why. Audio Assault just dropped a new amp sim. And that amp sim is called Shebalba, and it is based off of a <laughs> specific brand name here, Shiva. And boy, does it sound amazing. Like, I love to show you guys products that I can gush about. And this is definitively one of those. So first off, I actually have an entire song that I just wrote for the sake of this. Just drums, guitar, and that's it. Because I didn't want to have anything else clouding the mix. So you can really hear the beautiful tones and how they play together. So first off, this is going to be a review. It's also going to be an absurdly thorough walkthrough. So as always, I'm going to do my best to show you guys what I can do with the plugin. And what you guys can look forward to doing is if you do the same thing I did and impulse buy it. So here we go. First off, there is a pedal section. Now there are three pedals available. There is a noise gate called a gate or two. There is a volume booster, this time with an actual volume knob. So you have an option of a low shelf, a high shelf, and a volume knob. And a true bypass, as always. In software, it's really easy to do true bypass, but I appreciate it nonetheless. And then you have a tube screamer or a screamer and that one has a drive knob a tone knob and a level knob now guitarists among you will know exactly what those do but for the sake of reference i'll just let you know right now you will see this come into play for some of the heavier tones because it sounds really nice now along this ui strip here you'll see that there's an input gain knob which goes from negative 12 db input to plus 12 db input that's going to be plenty for most people so long as they have uh, working interfaces and aren't recording a microphone that requires phantom power without the phantom power off. There's also an output knob, which also goes from negative 12 to positive 12 dB. There are four options here for UI. There are pedals, which shows you all the pedal board. There's the amp, which shows you the amp itself. There's the cab section, which looks a lot different than past audio assault cab sections. We've also got an effects rack, which is limited, but powerful. And then we've got this new hamburger style menu here for the settings. So you've got the settings themselves, which allow you to choose the input routing. You can either choose to have the left input, the right input, or both inputs played through the amp, which is necessary. And anybody who makes an ant sim without the option of a stereo input is wrong. You then also have the quality options, which aren't actually low, mid, high, and max, but are in fact oversampling options. You also have the option of having a native graphics stack being the one that runs the plugin. I tend to prefer OpenGL just because I like the performance of it. And then you have the option of a double track simulator. Now we'll check that out later on some of the lead tracks because I think it sounds fascinating. Technically it's for rhythm guitar parts that you don't feel like tracking again, but you can use it to double track anything. And most importantly, you have the tuner. Works exactly like you'd expect a tuner to. You've got the presets menu, upon which I have saved a number of presets already because I have been absolutely loving this program. And some interesting options that are included are you can have the preset change the routing, you can have the preset change the quality, you can have a preset change whether or not the double tracking feature is on, and you can save any preset you want to. You can also go up a directory, you can turn to the home directory if you've gone up from said directory. You can actually add files specifically for this, so you can manually add a preset, you can add a folder to look at presets for, you can alternate between the different preset options. So. You can scroll through them to your heart's content easily with a left or right function, and that makes life very simple. I'm going to go back to the clean rhythms. The effects rack itself has a graphic EQ, a chorus, a delay, and a reverb to play with. So there's plenty of options, including all of the above, and you can tempo sync the delay, which I love. You also have MIDI preset options to save MIDI presets for adjusting different parameters with MIDI. You have a MIDI editor to bind any of those options to a MIDI control or delete said MIDI control. You can open up a devices menu in standalone only, although the option still exists in the plugin. It tells you this cute little message about how this manages devices in standalone mode, but it's 
this is a plugin, so you can't really do that. Whoops, a <laughs> little different. And then you have the opportunity to open the data folder, which shows you the location of the folder of all of the presets, IRs, and MIDI settings that you have. And if you wanted to, you could easily create a new folder, say one well, more studio tones, maybe that might end up getting zipped and added to a certain audio assault user group on Facebook to be shared with the world as presets for this particular plugin. So now that I've made that folder, just like on all my other ones, I'm going to open that up and boom, all of my personal presets saved in one place. So this is all fine and dandy and well and good and fun and clean and all that good stuff. But how does it sound? So first off, I'm just going to give it a nice little run through and show everybody how the settings worked thus far, just uh, briefly, and give you the opportunity to just enjoy the sound of each of these presets that I've made from the beginning and take a look at some of them as they're being played. Alright, so now that you've had an opportunity to listen to what, in my opinion, is a very diverse array of genres with different stylistic conventions and tonal possibilities all being put on display here, I think it's time that I showed you something pretty fun. So you notice how I just did a whole bunch, but each individual guitar track on my processor is using less than 1% CPU usage. No matter how much processing it's using on the track itself, no matter how many effects are active, all of that. Each guitar bus is using about half a percent to about two thirds of a percent. That's pretty freaking awesome. I gotta tell you, I love when plugins can be low resource like that. So let's start at the beginning here and take a look at how the clean tone works. Minus the lead. So first things first, you'll see that on the amp, I actually have it set to the clean channel. I have the gain slightly boosted. The bass at noon, mid scooped. Treble and presence high, but low depth. None of the pedals are active except for the noise gate. 
and the cabs are set to the default cab here. Now, the thing about the cab section is, you can actually change the 3D modeled cabs with these little arrows here. Which do make a big difference. Now this is the default one. You can actually adjust the mic levels, so this is mic B and this is mic A. And so this is a blend knob. You can actually blend between the two different mics. This is all mic B. All mic A. So because I'm in mic B, moving mic A doesn't do anything. But Mike B does. You can also hold the shift button to click on this and drag to change the mic distance from the cab. That might lead to some interesting tones. So now you have a much more distant tone. You also have a high pass and a low pass. Low pass works from 1K up to 22K, and the high pass works from 20 Hertz up to 600 Hertz. I don't have any effects on this one, so this one's a very simple tone to work with. Now the lead tone, it was very simple. It's virtually the same as the first one, but the mids are brought up a little bit. There's more depth to really get that clean bluesy breakup. I also checked the boost switch and the bright switch. I didn't adjust it with the shift switch because here's how it would affect the tone. It almost makes it too present. I want it to feel a little bit more rough around the edges on this one. I don't have any pedals except for the noise gate, the cab in its default position, and no effects. So I just drive it a little bit harder with a boost, a bright knob, and some more presence and mid-range. And I get a very nice breakup blues tone. Now up next we've got this crunch section, which I quite enjoy. Listen to that tone. Still clean, but this time I've added a tube screamer with a tone knob turned down to make it a little bit darker, a little bit more of a low end boost to give it that rumbly growl. Made the drive at around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock here and boosted the volume just on the tube screen or not with the clean boost and I actually turned down the high shelf. So we've got a lot more push into the cab this time. Still clean channel, but it's crunchy. If I were to turn off the boost in the bright. It loses some depth. I love that boutique growl. Again, the cabs are literally the default setting. And no effects. That crunchy buildup, I love it. Anyhow, onto the crunchy lead tone. More tone, more focus on the high, less on the low, volume boost on both. And I actually did shift here. The shift just makes it feel like it's a little bit more recessed into the mix. And I'm not quite sure what it adjusts, but I do know that I know it when I hear it. And it does something to help it sit a little bit nicer against the rhythm tracks. So... It 
pops out a lot. Press shift. Sits right in there. Again, default cabs. These default cabs just sound so good. I had no reason to change them on this section. And I love how dynamics actually affect the amp. It feels so good. This is one of the first times in a long time that I've actually loaded up an amp sim and just played and been like, yes, that feels good. So let's go into this more heavier, chunky vibe. Now that's some chunk. I actually bypassed all the pedals for this one, except for the gate and just straight up switched it to the lead channel, hit the bright knob, turned up the presence a little, turned the depth down a little, turned the treble up a little, turned the bass and mid down a little, and just inched up the gain a hair. If I hadn't, it just feels a little bit less forward. But just that one little nunch does a lot, in my opinion. Still default cabs, still nothing else. This is just straight up raw tone, folks. And now we have the lead tone for that section. So it's the lead channel still, but I've got the bright and the boost put in. And I did turn the screamers back on. So this time I've got a lot of high end to really cut through the mix. The tone is pushed forward as well. A lot of drive on this boy. On the input gain, it's about the same as the rhythms, but now there's more presence, less depth, less bass, a little bit more mid. The cab is still default, still no EQ. So these are all still raw tone. Now for one of my favorite and most interesting sections here, I've got this shoegazy section. I called it effects guitars originally because I didn't know what I was going to make it, but check this out. Still got that distortion from the last lead tone. Press the shift button in to make it feel recessed. Very subtle. Turn down the treble in the presence. Just let it be bass, depth, and mid, and a slightly lower gain. And it's in the clean channel this time, as opposed to the lead. If I'd left it in the lead channel, it would have been really gnarly. But this subdued, reverby vibe. Same cab still, but this time I gave it a chorus. High depth, low speed, maximum width. Mixed in at a 34%. A time synced quarter note delay with a decent amount of feedback, massive width, and again, around 40% mixed in. And then the reverb, the size, I originally had it huge. But I wanted it to still be a little bit audible underneath the uh, lead guitar part, so I brought it down to about 60% of the size. The tone's up a little bit to just be a tiny bit more airy, and it's mixed in at 65%. Now, originally I'd had it at about, like, 20%, but that got way too much of the guitar in there. This is supposed to be vibey. So there we go, like 64%, it's great. And this shoegazy tremolo lead Still clean section, maxed out gain, pedals are all cranked, the tone is lowered dramatically. If the tone on the screamer was actually cranked, it would be too nasally. So I softened it just enough and then drove it so it'll be a very warm mid rangey feel. It's all mid, a lot of presence, and no bass, treble, or depth. All the switches are checked, same cab, same effects even as the uh, rhythm guitar part. 
because it just blended so well. So I didn't change any of the effects from the rhythm guitar version of this, and it just feels... It's just pure, pretty shoegaze, my man. So after this, I had a breakdown, uh, musically speaking, and I thought that I wanted a really good, chunky tone to just break down with. So we're finally in the lead channel. Not a ton of gain, but volume boosted across the board. Everything toned up a little bit. Without these, it still sounds good, good breakup, but it doesn't have that aggression. With the boost, it kind of screams a little more. Little scooped mid, boosted presence and treble, and there's plenty of low end, even though the depth and the bass are lower. This one's also shifted so that it sits behind the drums. Without the shift, it's very in your face. But I just wanted it to be recessed a little. Cab is unchanged and there's no effects. For the lead, it's almost exactly the same, but more treble, a little bit more mid, a little bit less bass. And of course, I cut the low on the boost pedal. Everything else exactly the same. So after this part, I decided that I really wanted to show off some good metal. Some some deathy metal, if you would. So I just did like nine bars of straight up good old fashioned death metal. Kind of blackened, kind of not. I didn't go true vault this time, but I did have some fun. So check this out. Everything's lead. The rhythm guitars are not bright and not shifted, so they're very in your face. A lot of mid scoop, a lot of presence, a lot of treble, a lot of aggression in the pedals. I boosted the highs of everything and the drive isn't as high as you'd think so that they can still be clarity on the guitars. Didn't change the cab at all. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's the tone. No effects. But if I did want effects, I'd probably use this graphic EQ. Cut some 2K, boost some 8K, boost some 120, cut some of that, cut some of that for the snare. More air. Now that's old school. Meanwhile, this is actually a lot more mid-heavy than I'd expected, so I'm going to scoop that lead. Now it's old school. So you can get some seriously crushing tones with this boy. Like... No lie, this whole song is just this amp sim so far, and I love it. The amount of power that you can get to go from shoegaze to aggressive to whatever you feel like is just straight up incredible. And honestly, the fact that you can have your own impulse responses as well, and it comes with more than just the default 3D cabs, but you have these IRs as well to go off of. So the default one is Shibalba. which is very similar to the 3D cab, but a little more scooped. 
and you can adjust these. These are sliders to emulate the movement of the mic closer to the cap or further to the cone and also distance from the cap. So you can do very close or you can do it pretty far away. So let me adjust that and show you. This is cap. This is cone, but far. Cone, but close. Cap, but close. Cap, but far. And everything in between works great. You've also got a high pass and a low pass on the individual IR loader. It's the same one as on the 3D version. You also have a AB slider so that you can use the exact same thing on either, or you can switch it up. So if I wanted to use a Bogner Uber cab and an Angle 412 with V30s, I could. You can phase invert whatever you want, and you can actually align them based on samples. So if something doesn't sound quite right, You could bring them back into alignment, theoretically, and then you also have a level out. There's a lot of possibilities here with blending of IRs, going back to the home screen, going up. All of this should look familiar to you from the presets. It's great. And then you can switch back to the 3D cabs whenever you feel like it, and it'll switch back to the 3D cabs directly. You won't have to worry about your IRs getting lost. It'll just alternate between them and you can shoot out which you prefer. I actually really like the 3D cabs in this one, but ultimately it's up to you. So with that in mind, I think that I've officially done a thorough review, and now I'd like to give my take. I love it. It's great. I really, it was an instant purchase for me. I am a huge fan of these kind of boutique amps, and I've always wanted to have some of my own, and this really does hit that sweet spot for me, because these tones that I've been getting with this particular sim in no time flat allowed me to basically release a video on the same day that amp sim came out that's impressive so hopefully you guys learned something hopefully you enjoyed it as my wife is always saying always be plug in so like comment share subscribe do whatever you have to in order to validate me as a youtuber and a human being and if you have any comments or questions, suggestions, whatever, leave them in the comment section below. I am happy to respond to them and heart them and uh, show you guys that I appreciate you as much as, if not more than, you appreciate me. So I'm Phil from One Wall Studio. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a lovely experience with you guys. And go buy Shabalba. It is a great amp sim. All right. Take care. Bye bye.